Recording the guitar in 2023 couldn't be easier. All you gotta do is plug one end of a TS cable to the guitar and plug the other end of the input to the audio interface and that's it, right? A friend of mine came here the other day to track a few songs and he couldn't see the cable going into the audio interface. So I told him that I was using Spitif and well, he thought that I was sneezing. There are three ways in which you can record the guitar into a DAW or digital audio workstation. The analog, the digital, and the hybrid, which is essentially a combination of analog and digital. Let's start with the analog. In the context of guitar recording, an analog signal refers to the continuous variable voltage signal that is generated by the guitar pickups and responds to the vibrations of the strings. This analog signal is then processed and recorded through various analog components before being converted to a digital format for storage and further manipulation in your DAW. It is the most widespread method to record a guitar and every audio interface comes with at least one output. You can plug the guitar straight into the interface or via an alternative device like a Kemper or an Axe FX, and the signal will travel into your audio interface and hit its preamp section, which is then you know, adjusted for how much gain you want. This is known as gain station, and if you screw this part up, you'll end up with something known as clipping, which renders your recording completely unusable. The signal will then need to be translated or converted from analog to digital, also known as ADC, analog digital conversion, meaning it goes from variable voltage into binary, and everything else that it encompasses, like the sample rate, bit depth, etc. And well, this is the analog recording oversimplified, but you get the picture. If you ever recorded guitar, chances are that you've used this method. Now, in the digital domain, the audio signals are represented, processed, and stored in the digital format. This is in contrast to the analog domain, where the signal exists in a continuous analog waveform. There are a few ways to record and stay in the digital domain, but I will be focusing on SPDIF. SPDIF, or Sony Philips Digital Interface, is a digital audio interface that allows the transmission of, well, digital audio signals over coaxial or fiber optic cable. It converts the analog signal into digital stream of data. Digital signals are less prone to degradation over long cable runs compared to analog signals. This can result in a much cleaner signal with less noise and interference. It allows for synchronization between the devices and facilitates a cleaner signal path by avoiding multiple analog to digital conversions. So in effect, there's a lot less middleman. Whoop-de-doo, what does it all mean, Basil? Well, first of all, you will need an audio interface with SPDIF capability. And these tend to be, well, a little bit more expensive. You also need a digital device that has SPDIF transmitting capability, like a Kemper or an Axe FX. Make sure that the I.O. on both or input output of both devices actually match. In this case, the Kemper has an RCA in and out, and so does my audio interface. The popular Audient ID line, for example, uses a multi-port that is both AVAT and SPDIF. And since these don't match my Kemper, because I don't have an optical port on my Kemper, uh, I would need a device for RCA to optical. But you know, these are quite cheap. You can get them around $10 on Amazon. Connect the Kemper SPDIF output to your audio interface input and the Kemper SPDIF input to your interface's output. You must then set up the clock source to SPDIF on the audio interface, otherwise the data is not going to synchronize correctly and you're gonna get occasional pops and clicks during playing or recording. Then make sure that the control panel of your audio interface is well routed to SPDIF and from there into your DAW. And that's it, you'll be recording in SPDIF in no time. All right, but what is so special about SPDIF? Why would I even use this over analog? SPDIF is multi-channel, which means you can send the signal in stereo, left and right. But since we record the guitar in mono and not in stereo, we can customize what we want to send on those channels via one single cable. For example, on the Kemper, I can set my output to SPDIF and send in the same cable the left channel I set it to DI, which is the unprocessed signal for the guitar, and on the right channel, the Kemper processed sound, with or without the effects. And this also means that you save a lot of money, well, not a lot of money, but you save some money on an extra DI box. They're not very expensive, but hey, if you can save a hundred bucks, why not?
With Speedif, you don't really need to gain stage on the audio interface as the volumes are set in your master device. In the digital domain, like in Speedif, there's an ample space between the average signal level and the maximum represent uh, representable level, reducing the likelihood of accidental clipping. So the maximum amplitude is well defined in a digital system. For example, in a system with 16 bits, you have two to the power of 16, which gives you 65,536 possible amplitude levels. All of this ensures that clipping is less likely to occur if levels are managed properly. But I have to say, I never had to touch the spit of volume on my Kemper. It just works perfectly since the day that I bought it. But anyway, folks, technical jargon aside, the real beauty of using Spitif lies in the cable management, in the simplicity, and in the improved workflow. With just one cable, you can send both signals. You don't need to adjust the preamp for gain staging on the audio interface, so you can easily jump through clean and distorted sounds. But you might also ask, why is this DI so important? Well, and this is because most often than not, the wet or the processed recording that you've done might not work well in the mix. And if you have a DI copy, the mixing engineer can just reamp um, the track, that means running it through an amplifier again, and EQ it properly in the amplifier of their choice. And here lies another benefit to using Spitif. Reamping is super easy and doesn't require an additional device to match impedance and signal levels. And these boxes can range from, you know, an extra reamp box can range from 90 to 400 plus dollars or pounds. Using the SPDIF output of your audio interface, you can send the signal back to your Kemper or your AxeFX. Just set it in the Kemper's input to reamp via SPDIF. And now the million dollar question, is there any difference in sound? Well, you tell me. Let me know in the comments what you think. In theory, the analog recording should sound warmer because it has a lot more middleman, like multiple analog to digital conversions. It has a preamp, uh, a preamp gain stage, and these things introduce noise and saturation, where the spit of recording should sound cleaner for the opposite reasons. Think of it like ordering a soup at a restaurant where the soup is the signal coming from your guitar. In the Spitif restaurant, the chef just brings the soup himself directly from the kitchen to your table. The analog, you get multiple waiters carrying the soup, so it's very likely that you will get finger, you know, in the soup. But maybe that finger is the special ingredient that makes that soup from that restaurant so delicious. It's entirely up to you what's your favorite taste or sound, but for me, I can't hear any difference. Maybe I'm just deaf. Personally, I use both approaches. If I'm using the Kemper, I use Spitif. If I use something else, like a dark glass for bass, for example, I got one right here. I use analog, obviously, because it doesn't have Spitif support. Anyway, the aim of this video was to show you an alternative that potentially could improve your workflow, reduce a little bit of the number of cables on your desk, and save you on extra devices like DI and reamp box. I really hope that you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please don't forget to subscribe and leave a thumbs up. My name is Philippe, and I will see you next time. Thank you.